our road to Estes Park, reviewing the new 2019 Limited with the Raptor engine. A lot of traffic up here. I hope you can hear me. Uh, everybody wants to go to Estes, have fun. Testing this out, pulling a 3,000 pound two horse Cimarron. We got from Transwest. And we're going to go down the mountain and we're going to go cross country. So we're going to have a lot of fun with this. But this is the Raptor engine. It's got the 10 speed automatic. It's the limited. So it's got every toy known to man. So we're going to go have fun and put some miles on this puppy and see what that 450 horsepower and 510 pound feet of torque is like. So come join us for this review. If you have a short bed truck, you know it's not easy to hook up to a gooseneck. Pop-Up came out with these extensions from 9 inches to 16 inches to keep you from breaking out your back window when you're pulling a gooseneck trailer. And everybody uses a short bed. That's the most proper truck there is, a crew cab short bed. So, protect that window. Love the LED headlights. This is just gorgeous, great lights all the way around on this truck. Just makes you want to go cruising cross country, which I'm going to do. Boys and girls, I'm in the 2019 Ford F-150 Limited. That's the top of the line. They even put the VIN number on the, the center console armrest so you don't forget the VIN number. But anyway, I'm pulling a two-horse Cimarron. It's a 2019. It's like the truck. It's aluminum skin. It has some steel framing in it, just like the truck. Good combination, but we're up here heading toward Estes. Kelsey had a baby, so she's not with me yet. So, we'll get her back in front of the camera as soon as we can. But this puppy, this sucker is fast. That's the Raptor engine. It's got dual exhaust, so it sounds cool. I don't know if it's augmented sound or not, but it sounds powerful. You know, if you can hear that or not. But it is cool. We're up here in mountains and this thing flies all over. Got to set the, put it in tow haul mode just for the fun of it. Because I like tow haul mode. But we're up here in the mountains with a light load. But anyway, I love this truck. That limit only comes with one interior. That's this light leather and dark leather combination. It's gorgeous. I love the interior of this. It's sexy and it looks luxuriously, and it is. You got leather everywhere. You got leather on the dash. You've got aluminum. It's real aluminum, and the accents, you know, and it's uh, it is just cool. I have to look up the color on it because it looks like nail polish. It's got sparklies, kind of like what Cadillac was famous for having. But this puppy is loaded. It's got you know all the toys, the power running boards. And this giant moonroof, the panoramic view moonroof, but uh, taking some curves up here in the mountains. Now this has a 10-speed automatic, and you know this Raptor engine is in, of course, the Raptor. It's in this limited 150. It's also in the Lincoln Navigator, and you put it in sport mode, and you got a hot rod here. This thing's fly down, fly. I've got tow haul mode, but I'm putting a lot of miles on it. It's probably about 15, 1600. I'm going to take it to Oklahoma and really do some world testing on fuel mileage on the road. It's rated like 21 on the highway, 17 in the city, and 19 miles per gallon combined. And oh, we're up here in a gorgeous mountains. But so we'll be doing a pretty long video on this truck, showing you all the cool stuff it handles so well. And this is the EcoBoost, the 3.5 twin turbo. But uh, I'll give you more details on that. And uh, this is a gorgeous combination. The white truck, the white trailer, all the chrome. And this, of course, is a monochromatic accent. So the bumpers are white. The mirrors are white. So there's a lot of packages available on this truck. But uh, dual port, dual injection. You got port and direct. The port takes off early and then the direct comes in. At higher speeds so it's similar to the truck that i bought so it's got that big powerful raptor engine in it but what's cool about this is they programmed it right i'm hoping they eventually do it to all the eco boosts but this one coming down the hill we'll see how great shifts but i've what i've driven in these and then there's also 
uh, a version in the Expedition that's got more power than a regular 3.5 EcoBoost. But all of those were calibrated perfect for towing down the hill, for grade braking, for tow haul mode. They will just shift and hold it down. You know, very few brake applications. We've proven that when I helped TFL truck, we're doing the Eye Gauntlet on these bigger three, on these more powerful three fives, react better to tow haul mode. And it's a calibration thing, so they can do it to all of them. But um, so it has that, it has the speed, so you can always merge the traffic so well. And uh, this might be the trailer you want to get a reverse load horse trailer, so when you accelerate or brake, brace their butts against the wall but anyway yeah this is one nice truck and it's you know it's Ford's top of the line luxury truck in the 150 and uh, you know that's just how it works look at the gorgeous rocks and it's curvy road. it's nice about this road and Kelsey does a really good job with it is it's got curves and switchbacks and, and it's just a fun road to drive on with especially a truck like this the way it handles the speed and uh, so anyway we'll get the details and we'll talk about more when it come down the hill but going up the hill is no problem I can go as fast as I want with this much power you never have a problem with accelerating passing or merging which uh, gives you some confidence there on towing a trailer it's nice to have the the extra power because you know a lot of times people pulling big trailers or just kind of putting along going up these big mountains and you know slows down traffic of course that's where the semis have to be in the right lane and they're usually restricted down to one of the lower gears which might be clear down to like 35 miles an hour so if you want to drive that slow that's fine you'll get your ordinary truck but if you want to be in the fast lane if you want to pass people if you want to go clear the hills and the mountains uh you know and drive at the speed limit and then you, you want something like this because it's uh, it's a great towing machine. So, I'll talk to you coming down the other side. MSRP is 74775 And that's with all this cool packages that's on here. This is a short, short bed. So, it's a five and a half foot bed back there. It's called a white platinum metallic. And that is so cool. It like, you know, there's little sparklies in it. <laughs> so, it, it reflects. It's just gorgeous. It just looks like cream you know like nail polish it's just awesome and the interior is called the camel back two-tone and that's the only way you can get this puppy but i like it. it's dark brown and almost like a cream color well it's a but this has everything you can think of of course it's got the power running board and all that that looks like that's the standard on it um the rear bench is a 60 40 you get all that room back there eight inch screen on the front Adaptive cruise control with stop and go. Adaptive cruise control is my favorite option. And memory driver's seat. I like that. It's power telescoping and, and uh, tilt instead of the you know the manual lever. Which what else would you expect? 360 degree camera. And this actually has the front camera on it, which is so cool. It'll actually show what's going on in front of you, like what the Raptor does. But uh, all the safety things, the lane keeping, you know, the hot spot, the uh, access, the intelligent access, uh, the cross traffic alert, all those things to keep you safe. Pre collision assist, reverse sensing, of course. Um, and this is ready for trader, so it's got the trader brake controller, voice active navigation. I love that. Um, and for options, of course, it's the limited series. It's got the 22 inch polished aluminum wheels. Those are awesome, man. I just kind of want to play rap music when I'm driving this thing. They're the cool 22s. This is a 355 rear end, which is getting me the common rear end now for Ford in the half ton series. It's got electric locking rear axle. And because it's loaded, dude, you know, the GVWR, the gross vehicle weight rating, is only 6750. So it's not going to tow the biggest trailer. It's got the Pro Trader backup assist that kind of give you that. It's got the bed liner, the sprayed in bed liner, the tailgate step that's built in it. And it's so much nicer now that it's built in the tailgate. It used to be on top of the tailgate part of it. it had all that rough stuff. You couldn't really sit back there. And I use tailgates for benches to work on stuff. If you got this in a two-wheel drive stripped down on a limited, you could tow up to 11,100. 
the way this one's equipped in a 4x4, four four, you're closer to 9,300. Payload's around 1,500. This is, uh, we're only pulling 3,000 pounds, so we're not really testing the power. I like to get them closer to that weight. It's got like ash, ash, some, ash swirl wood is what's in it, and they're real aluminum, which is really cool. The saddleback leather. But it's got the little pouches on the back seat. I like those. That's getting to be a common thing. And this puppy's got five star ratings on just about everything. Overall, it's a five star. Frontal crashes for driver and passengers, a five star. Side crash is a five star for front and rear seats. Uh, the only thing that drops down to a four star is rollover, which surprises me because the A B pillar, the A is the windshield, B is your, your first framework for your door. And at the floor of that, they reinforce all that. My brothers rolled one of these, and it's amazing how well they hold up on these super crews. The big crew cab. But we're going to keep driving. We're only towing 3,000 pounds. And coming up the hill, I've got 10.4 uh, miles per gallon, according to the computer. We'll see what we get toward the bottom of the hill. And going down the hill. And I've been grade breaking, which is so cool. You just let the transmission do it, or sometimes you tap on your brake to activate it, but it will come on by itself because of the grade you're going down. It senses all that. So this is so cool. It's got all this power. We're trying to hold these ponies back, but the grade ship is very effective in this engine. I wish it was calibrated the same way in all the three five EcoBoosts, but uh, it holds you in that gear. Like now we are in fifth. On the way up, it was mostly in seventh gear, which is direct drive. Coming down the hill, it's holding us back, so it jumped down a couple gears, dropped down a couple gears, and that's where it thinks it should hold us. We'll never get below third from the factory calibration, so but that's too high of RPM. So you know, it looks at all that: the RPMs in the engine, the angle of descent. Apply your brakes it takes that into effect that it means you want to help stop and it will shift down for you but very good control especially this high output 3.5 eco boost but it makes you you feel safe coming down the hill because it's holding your gear holding your speed and then i've got the adaptive cruise control so you combine all that together and you'll come down the speed you want and with this much power you can use it going uphill and it'll hold the speed you want. But uh, it's a safe way to do it. And this is a great combination, this 10 speed that's calibrated to grade shift properly without you having to use your truck brakes because, you know, we see them all the time. We're going up and down I 70 through the big the tunnels and all that. There'll be a semi almost every other time we're up there that we burn his brakes up coming down the hill. And, you know, it's you see the same thing with RVs and all kinds of trailers because you got to be able to let the transmission and the engine all slow you down uh, with the engine braking with you know back pressure against your exhaust valves and all that is a way to control yourself coming down a hill but yeah I love this truck for mountain driving as good as it gets in a, in a half ton class. Hope you're getting some of the sound because I'm cleared down to third gear, which is as low as this transmission. Usually, downshift's coming down a hill, but it senses our angle of descent. I've got adaptive cruise control on, and so it's locking me into fourth gear. No, third gear. We went from fifth to fourth, now we're in third. And you can hear the RPMs, it's running about, looks like uh, 37. 100 RPM, and it's EcoBoost. That's the cool thing about all these EcoBoosts. They all develop torque way earlier than most gas engines. So you have the RPM, kind of like a diesel, very similar flat lines across there, holds that power. And, you know, up, up shifted to fourth. Oh, here's a curve, curve and a half. Whoa! Let the adaptive cruise control work, so that's what we're doing. Such a nice handling truck. Let's see where I'm at. Gonna slow down a little bit on the adaptive cruise control. Oh, Elk. <laughs> the 
right now. This very controllable truck. It jumped back up to six. So it thinks we've leveled out and the RPMs are, looks like 1700 RPMs. Going down this last jog from Estes. The man on Macro. Oh, just downshifted to fourth. As it senses a little more decline coming down the hill. So it's trying to save my life by down shifting and holding the speed. I love this. I love the, the adaptive cruise control. I'm adjusting it with the you know the plus and minus buttons so I can stay close to the speed limit. And sometimes it slows me down a little more than I want, so I use the plus and minus to control that. But no, nah, it is so cool. Got these banked curves. <laughs> this is just a fun truck to drive. It's like a sport truck. It really is. So now I'm in third. About as low as I'm going to go. If most transmissions work too, it will save itself. So if your RPM shoot too much and it knows if you downshift, it'll really redline it. What the engine will do will actually upshift and slow your RPMs down, but then you're going to have to use some braking to control at that point. So you try not to get to that point. You always want it to stay in that lower gear as long as you can. You want to save your brakes. But, uh, you know, it's got fail-safe systems in there, so if it thinks you're going to blow it up, get too crazy with it, it will upshift. It makes you go faster, but it's lower RPM. So then you've got to use your brakes to get it back down to where you want your speed to be. But, uh, yes, this high output really has great tow haul mode grade shifting. I think this is 36, Highway 36 we're on. But anyway, uh, my fuel mileage coming down the mountain, of course, is better. It got up to 12.7 pulling this trailer. That's how gas engines are when they're pulling any trailer. Light ones, heavy ones, heavy ones, of course, a little bit worse, but they never get great gas mileage. Diesels are the ones that are the champion of towing trailers for fuel mileage. But, you know, you got to pay for all that extra engine and transmission that comes with the diesel. And then you got, you know, 60 to 80 cents higher fuel. So that's the choice that you make there. But uh, if you don't tow that often, you're not going to have a big deal with towing with these half tons. Well, I'm leaving Colorado, <clears throat> Mr. Truck here. I know, I've got a TFL shirt on. <laughs> I haven't done my laundry yet, so I'm wearing TFL shirts. Anyway, just filled up premium, my 36 gallon gas tank. Bought the 91, so now I've got all that power. Let's see what it does for fuel mileage. It's rated at 21 on the highway and 19 combined, 17 in the city. My EcoBoost just doesn't have this powerful one in it, but the same 355 rear end is rated 23 on the highway, so that's what you lose for power, about two miles to the gallon on the top end. But I'm so happy. This limited has massaging seats. I'm so happy. Oh, it's just rolling up and down and all around my back. And oh, I just don't want to put me to sleep, but it will make me happy. So I'm headed toward Kansas. Gotta go through Kansas. Well, you can, yeah. sometimes I go through New Mexico and Texas to get to Oklahoma. But this time I'm gonna fly through Kansas. I'm gonna be going about nine hours, maybe a little less on the road. Having trouble with radio. Of course, it's got serious radio, but every time I push one preset button, they all turn to that channel, and it's starting to tick me off. I keep going through and doing doing all the ones I want, like the seventies and Elvas, and I love the Bridge Thirty Two. But every time I push a button, they all go to that channel. So my presets suck right now, and I don't know how to change or adjust it, but. Uh, I'm just enjoying the seats. I don't care. I love these seats. Shoot, I gotta get in the fast lane. I gotta go faster. I'll talk to you later. If I can get some light on the subject. Yes, <clears throat> here I am at night. Almost ready to turn south toward Oklahoma, driving across Kansas. And I've noticed how bright these lights are. I mean, I've got a regular XLT in a 2018. This is a 2019 Limited. And man, these LED lights are bright, which is really good because it snowed through here, and you can see wet spots that's going to be slick like ice, 
and I can see all that so clearly. I really like these LED lights. This is what I need, man. I need some LED lights for my truck. This is just too cool. Flying across Kansas. Well, look at that. Texas State Line. Can't remember the name of the town, but it has Texas in it. That's what happens in Texas. All those little towns on the borders get named Texacana and Texaola and Tex all kinds of stuff. Forward camera, kind of like the Raptor. So you can't hardly see the signs. They're way off there in the distance that we're staring at. Yeah. But yeah, too cool. And there's a regular view of the front of the truck. And there's that 360. I put in reverse, you can see all that on the back of the truck too. But this is good. I'm heading to Texas. So speed limit jumps on I-40 here to from 70 miles an hour to 75 miles an hour. So that's funner. I can hit the wind harder. It's coming down the south. It's pushing hard on me. But yeah, it's too cool. Well, heading for New Mexico. I am in dumbass Dumas, Dumas, Texas. D-U-M-A-S. So I'm not sure which pronounced dumbass or dumbass. Mile, turn right onto North Burge Avenue. But anyway, I'm going through it. Nice little town. Well, now we're in New Mexico. Somebody's kind of worked on the sign here. Just leaving Texas and going to New Mexico. Well, <laughs> I just had some excitement. I would have filmed it, but it was too cold and I was trying to get going again, but... I had a flat tire, one of 22 inches, had a piece of metal stuck in the middle. And the uh, tire pressure monitoring gauge on the dash came on. One tire was supposed to be all supposed to be 35, it dropped clear down to 25. So, <laughs> as fixes on the road go, they're never easy. So I go in there to the air pump, try to pump it up, think it's just low air. And the air pump wouldn't work, finally got it working, didn't have a gauge, didn't work. So I went in and bought a gauge <laughs> so I could see what I was doing. And the air pressure was really low. It was not, it was not picking up. So then they told me it was a Love's gas station truck stop that I could use the air where the diesels fill up with fuel. So I go over there. I pump it up. I use my new gauge. And I got it up there. And then I watched it on the dash. And it kept dropping. It kept dropping. And I thought, crap, it's got a hole in it. So I went out and rolled the tire, rolled the truck around. It was 10 degrees outside, so I really wasn't in the mood to change the tire. And I was in Clayton, New Mexico, and I knew 100 miles from nowhere, it would take two hours at least to get somebody there for roadside assistance. So I found the piece of metal. It was a triangular piece of steel stuck in the tread. It was in the side wall. I would have been screwed. I would have had to change tire or something. So now I go in, buy a pair of pliers, and a tire repair kit, just basically a plug tool. And a plug tool is just like a rat file that you drill out the hole with, and then you have a needle, which has real sharp pieces inside the needle hole, and you stick this webbing in there, it's like a rubber string thing that's pretty thick, and you pour all the goop on it, the lubrication and stuff that helps seal it, and then you drill out the hole, you take, well I took the, took the chunk of metal out, drilled out the hole with the red file looking thing. Then you stick the plug, is what they're called, they're called plugs, on the needle in the hole. And you go up and down a little bit, and that's actually got a knife inside the needle hole, so that helps saw it. And you get it in the place you want it, and then you pull it out, and it'll cut the plug into two pieces. Now, two pieces wedged in the hole with all the lubricant on it, and it's doing beautifully. It's holding air. It hasn't lost a pound. Actually gained a pound. So we're doing good, so I'm on the road. It's still colder than all get out outside. Now it's eight degrees, 100 miles from nowhere. So I'm happy, I'm repaired, my tire's working. <clears throat> and I don't think the tire's ruined, it's just to get back to town, we'll get a tire company put a patch on it. On the road again. I just can't wait to get on the road again. Well, got a little bit of ice on the road. We're being careful, got an all wheel drive just in case it feels some ice and snow that I can't see. But I thought I'd go through the score, these 100 points of score for trader ability, trader function. Of course, this has that powerful engine, so there's a lot of things it's going to be great on. Trader control is great. I just pulled a 3,000 pound trailer. That's all we can do this time, so you always want to pull a trailer. I like to get closer to maximum weights, it's not always possible. 
Try to control it. Got to give it a 20. Uh, no problem at all with that. Of course, having all that power helps. And then we've got uh, truck handling. We'll give it a 20. Reaching controls, like all these new Fords, it's very good. I can get to everything except for the stupid brake controller. Is underneath the trailer and backup pro assist. I uh, can't even hardly see it, especially at night. They moved it up on the Super Duty. Well, they didn't have pro trailer assist until the 2020s. And then uh, because of what they did to the steering on it, they can actually do that for goosenecks and, and trailers. So they put the, tra the Pro Trailer Assist in the 2020 Super Duty, but they put it where it's supposed to be, above the Trailer Pro Assist. So that's where I like it, and hopefully in 2020 we'll see the F-150 there. But because of that, I can't give it a 20. I've got to give it a... Ah, give it an 18. So you'll see these scores, and I will add them up and put a total on there. So we've got a 20, 20, and uh, what did I say, an 18? Uh, uh, mirrors, I mean, they're not towing mirrors. I mean, you can only go so far. These are good mirrors. They're, they're not as long as some of the other ones out there. So, you know, and I can't always get a towing mirror. So it's kind of hard to judge it down for not having a towing mirror because in this class, they're hard to get as a media truck. And then heavy duty class, you can get them in the super duty class. So mirrors, I'm going to cut it down to a 19. Uh, and acceleration, of course it's a 20. It's got the Raptor engine. 510 foot-pounds of torque, 450 horsepower. I hope that it has a 20, but it does. Very powerful. Very ex you put it in sport mode and it's just a race car. So there you have it. I'll add those up and total them out on this screen. So you kind of know what I think of this as far as a trailering truck. <laughs> Can you see me? It's dark. Just go Raton Pass uh, after fixing a flat tire, and it was, you know, it's a snowstorm here in Colorado. A lot of snow, putting along, bumper to bumper up the hill and down the hill. Pretty tall mountain, Raton Pass. I think it's part of the Santa Fe Trail, or some trail goes through there from the wagon wheel days. But anyway, going up that hill, I had it in all wheel drive, not all wheel, automatic four wheel drive. So if something happened, it could kick in. And I went to the manual shifting, which I like. This had great control, and it was 10 speed. I dropped it down to third, and then I even put it in tow haul mode when I was coming down the hill. Uh, not that I'm pulling the trailer, but it does sense your downhill descent. And if it thinks you're going too fast, it will grade shift for you. It won't go below third, I don't think. But anyway, so that's where I went. I went to third. Had good control on the truck. Now the semis are flying down the road like they can because they have all that tongue weight. So anyway, I thought this truck handled very well on a snowy pass up and down the hill in heavy traffic. Now, of course, I can't see anything. The semi just flew by me and stirred up the snow. But I got the fog lights on. I'm doing fine speed up but I'm back in automatic driving automatic on a transmission but uh, yeah no problem the tires doing fine and we're not leaking any more air so we should make it home tonight that'll help yeah finally got home this last uh, 400 miles or so from New Mexico we got like 19.2 miles to the gallon and I think it's because we probably averaged about 65 and we hit snowstorms in New Mexico. And then we got up to Raton Pass, and that's a pretty tall mountain. That's right on the border of New Mexico and Colorado. We went up and down. And on the other side coming down, I had Toha mode. I had it manual. And I shipped it clear down to third. And I kept playing with the gears. And then I had all-wheel drive on, all that to slow me down because it was slick. And then I got out of there toward Trinidad we got deeper snow so I couldn't go real fast but I think I averaged about 65 but yeah I got over 19 like 19.2 in the last the last run so it's pretty good now it's really interesting gas here in Colorado it was somewhere around 205 to 209 around here but got into Kansas you know it jumped up to gosh 225 or more 
And about the same price as Colorado when I was in Oklahoma. Oklahoma used to be one of the cheapest states to buy gas in. Oklahoma and Missouri are my favorites. And this go around, you know, I don't know what's going on lately, but there's not as many gas stations. I know it's a lot of empty ones in Amarillo, but uh, gas was about the same as Colorado. And a lot of the oil comes out of Oklahoma and Texas. And then in Texas, the gas was higher than here, you know, 15 to 20 cents. So it's, I don't quite understand all that. But uh, anyway, so we're about to end this project. Had fun in the Limited. Did a pretty long trip. We did probably uh, well over 1,400 miles in a three-day jog. So I hope you enjoyed the video.